It is, it is our, our duty, duty to fight for our freedom. We will not make excuses. We will make changes. It is our duty. It is our duty to We must love and support. We must love and support. We must love and this money in the same way following this announcement. And if so, why does he think he has the authority? We have nothing to lose. We have nothing to lose. We have nothing to lose. But our chains. But our chains. But our chains. Yes, sir. I'm Antonio Brown. Everybody calls me AB. I'm with a few organizations, too many to list. Uh, I'm a community activist. Uh, first meeting. Uh, hopefully to be more. Thank you. Have a seat. We're going to introduce you. <laughs> Thank you for that. Overlooking it. Yes, sir. her first election to the board of this council. She operates a couple businesses in, our, in this neighborhood. And we're just so pleased to have her as our guest speaker. And we want to give her as much time as she needs. So without further ado, we're going to ask Councilwoman Tammy Hawkins, she will please come forward and give us her presentation. Councilwoman. First of all, I want to say thanks for having me. 
first I'm gonna take this off, okay? Because outside of being a councilwoman, uh, I'm just me. I put on my pants the same way everybody in this room does, okay? Uh, I fight really hard for my constituents. Uh, it should be way more people in this room than it is. That's right. That's first of all, and uh, God will and I try to make it every third month. Wonderful. You know that I know. Uh, God will and also, I wanna see this room uh, filled the next time I come, because I'm definitely gonna get the word out. Yeah. Uh, I feel like you know, if, if I can be as transparent as possible, I feel like I'm fighting a battle all alone in, in Metro Council. Mm -hmm. uh, this is new. I've only been in the seat since January. I'm not a politician. I'm just not. I'm still learning. Uh, but more than anything, I've learned that it's really hard when you're passionate about certain things. They don't care. That game up there is worse than a street game. <laughs> you know, I'm used to the, you know, I'm, I'm used to the streets because I've been in the streets before. I'm a second chancellor, so I understand. So people that normally hasn't been through anything really can't tell me too much. So, so I done been in all walks of life. So don't let me, you know, this suit jacket fool you. Okay, uh, I've been in Parkland thriving for the last 18 years. This is my daycare over here. I had another daycare over here in this plaza before I hired a gentleman uh, that was a second chancer and uh, he broke in and robbed it and burnt the whole building. Uh, so now this is those three uh, commercial spaces are getting renovated right across from the library. But I didn't just stop there because I knew that this area needed an affordable grocery store. So God seen a bigger vision. So I took this little bitty old apartment that's right over here, a two bedroom, and turned it into a grocery store. So I've been in Parkland. I do food drives. I do coat drives. I do Christmas over Parkland. And I've been doing this all alone for the last three years. So when this seat came available, I was like, uh-uh, uh-uh, no, I don't know nothing about it. Plus, I'm a second chance, uh-uh, they're going to turn me up. But then I love to tell my story uh, because it made me the woman that I am today. We need more people like us. Right. We just need more people who, who's who's either been through something or because uh, a lot of a lot of my colleagues don't go in the neighborhoods that they represent. They don't knock on doors. They don't talk to people. They don't just pull up and just say, hey, what's going on? The first time, and I call a spade a spade. And uh, uh, nobody put me in that seat but God. So when he put me in that seat, I don't have nobody telling me how to vote or how to do this and how to do that. But I've also learned that the only way that you can get anything passed is you need 13 other people. <laughs> so sometimes you got to play the game because that's all it is. And if you don't play it, then you don't really get nothing passed for your community. And that's just what it is. I'm 49, I don't have any kids. I'm getting a house built right over here in Parkland on Olive. Uh, I'm just a fighter. And I need more people in this room to help me fight. That's right. uh, I can't do it all alone. That's right. Sometimes if I can't show up, I get constituents that's upset, I can't be everywhere in five or six different places. It's just one of me. But if I just had more people like me and more people that was willing to speak up, uh, and I used to be radical. I used to be real radical. But I had, to, I had to understand and I had to learn that people don't listen to you when you're radical. They just don't. 
even though you're making a lot of sense, they still just don't listen. So I had to learn how to channel my voice, you know, and I had to learn uh, to lower my tone and still get my same point across because I run up on you quick, fast, and arrow. Um, so I don't have a problem with being or talking to the radical people and being their voice of reason because I understand. Uh, people's always asking, they always say, uh, I need you to do this and I need you to do that. You know, a lot of constituents, a lot of the community, they want to try to hold their council person accountable. And you're supposed to. But even when your council person is accountable, I try to make sure that my constituents are going to be accountable. Because most of the constituents, the things that y'all ask from us, y'all don't give in return. Half people don't come out and vote no more. Right. You know, and, and the people are the ones that put, you know, these people in the seat. Once people knock on your door and ask for your vote, you don't see them no more. To, you, you don't see these people no more until the next election comes. That's so important. Y'all got to stop putting people in the seat who y'all don't see until the, the next election. Y'all got to start putting people in the seat that really, really care. You know, not because you used to this person just being on the chat. No, it don't work like that. You know, I, I, I sponsored an ordinance to take the pins out of the gun. A lot of, and it's the lack of knowledge. And like I said, I'm still learning. I didn't know that after a gun was used in a homicide, that that same gun goes back to an auction and resold and the funds go to LMPD. Mm -hmm. So when I found that out, I sponsored that. It was only one Republican that said no. So now it's on the state level. So not only do you have to hold us accountable, you have to hold your state representative accountable too. Because it's all bad design. It, it's, it's more guns on the streets than it is us, it seems like. And it's all by design for us to kill each other. That's it. You know, uh, I see a lot of nonprofits and uh, people saying uh, guns up, guns down, bosses to bangers, all of them. But I don't see these guys going attacking the issue going and grabbing these kids and say, uh-uh, nah, we ain't doing that. You know, it's okay. You can sit in front of people and tell them how you used to be, what you used to do, but really taking the chances and taking the risk. You know, I got a lot. If we have a really, really, really big gang problem out here, y'all. Neighborhoods against neighborhoods. It's not like the Bloods and the Crips, uh, you know, like kind of back in the day when I was coming up, it's more like a Market Street against Park Duval, Old Block against a, a, a Newburgh. So those are the type of war games that we are having right now. And nobody really wants to say what it is. That's what it is. You know, uh, I've also been fighting really hard to get these names. From these officers, I was one of the first ones that asked that question. We need the names. And I need y'all behind me saying, Mayor, we need the names. They can get them. It does, LMPD is already short staffed. So if they gotta be short another 50 because 50 people was involved in, in, in calling blacks boys and monkeys and mistreating us and stuff like that, then guess what? We'll be 50 more down. Mm -hmm. But we have got to hold the mayor, mm -hmm. the council members mm -hmm. accountable. We need those names. We can't move forward. For me, I'm not giving LMPD a dollar in the budget. Nothing. We want the names. If y'all want the money, it's y'all. What y'all have to understand, all this money that is being spent is taxpayer. 
It's y'all. So if y'all don't speak up, you know, it's just little old me. And after so long, uh, one of my colleagues, you know, he fights really, really hard. He, he fights hard for, um, you know, so many different things. But it's just gotten to where they kind of blackballed him out. He can't fight no more, yeah. you know. Um, so at the end of the day, y'all, have, even though y'all don't sit on Metro Council, man, y'all got to come up here. You know, y'all got to stand for something. You're not even standing to battle to fall. You know, I need y'all. Sure. You know, um, if there's anything, absolutely anything that I can do for you guys, uh, no event is too small. I really don't allow my um, legislative assistant to pick and choose where I go. I pick and choose where I want to go. I'm going to show up. No matter what. Uh, not unless God just don't allow me to. Uh, or if I'm in a committee meeting or if it's a council meeting that night. I can't. But if you guys need me for anything, I don't know how many people in this room is in my district. But if you need me, I'm here. I'm accessible. And if I'm not in your district, whoever your council person is, you need to make sure that they're accessible. That's what you pay your tax dollars for. And your council person is supposed to be your, your, your voice. And they're not. So, uh, uh, anybody got any questions? They can throw them at me. Uh, anybody got anything they want to ask? Do we need to get the ball game for your district? Ooh. I have Parkland. I have uh, um, across from Chickasaw Park. Um, like wind rows, the back rows going all the way around up to Cypress. I have Algonquin Park. Uh, I don't have on the right side of Algonquin. Uh, that's Kumar Rashad. He replaced Keisha Dorsey. I have Cane Run Road on the right side, not on the left side, going all the way out to Braggart Road. I have Lake Dreamland. Um, I got Park Duval. I got all the subdivisions that's in the back of McDonald's. Going out, Cane Run. I have Shagbart, Teak Wood, Donald Avenue. I go all the way out. And then I have Hemlock. Uh, my area is pretty huge. So uh, um, I try to use my time wisely. Parkland? Where we at right now? Yes, ma'am. I have like maybe past Reynolds, so I stopped right there at Greenwood. That's where I stopped at. Coming from Greenwood, coming all down. Mm -hmm. Can you mention in your presentation that you had one colleague <laughs> that was working diligently and hard? That's Jacoria. Every uh, uh, right yeah, he but but he has to. It's, he's probably just got worn out with uh, coming to colleagues, trying to get colleagues to. Uh, well, you've never really been through anything, then you just don't know. And and a lot of times we put people in those seats. Uh, people are placed in those seats. Let me just say it where it is. Sometimes people just say, "Hey, here I need you to run. Uh, here, let me give you this." And, it shouldn't be like that, you know. So uh, uh, Jacory's a fighter, but I think that um, you know he's just gonna have to go a different route because it's it's really hard for him to get through this path. Mark Baker is my council person. Marcus. What can I do? What do you want me to do to hold him more accountable? <laughs> he knows me. Yeah. Well, Marcus is the president, <clears throat> um, and I will say. I'm going to give you a prime example on how you can help Marcus accountable. Okay. The, 
there was a uh, a couple of organizations who wanted to try to apply for $40 million, okay? Um, Metro Council uh, agreed to um, give that $40 million to a health entity. The next day, that health entity hired uh, Tony Pendleton, who sits on the council. Um, uh, well, no, no one wanted to sign to have that investigated. So in a meeting I said, um, didn't nobody have a problem when Shirley Brown Hamilton or when Barbara Shanklin or when Judy Green, nobody had a problem with signing somebody to stand for all three of those black women, you know, to get almost kicked off the council and get kicked off council, you, you know, but uh, it just seems as if everybody's tiptoeing around this $40 million. And, and it's just kind of been in a dormant. Uh, and they just didn't have a hard time with finding anybody uh, to, uh, to go sign for any of those three women to get kicked out of council. Mm -hmm. But with this uh, PNT, uh, I think they just found someone to, uh, Tim Fields, is that his name? Uh, Kevin Fields. When he signed, yeah, uh, he signed uh, for the investigation, but it's just been kind of quiet. Uh, but as as I will say that it's a game, um, and 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 as 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 my colleague and as the president of Metro Council, you know, conflict is going to come. The Republicans is going to say, well, if 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 you don't do this, we gonna do this. Sometimes you just got to go ahead and just say, go on do it. Because when they want to, uh, when they want to show that us Democrats have done something wrong, or they are alleging for us to have done something wrong, guess what? They get somebody to sign on us quick. It's us. We always scared. We don't never want to go sign the papers when it come against the Republicans. We scared. You know. So I just think that. Um, He just, uh, <laughs> you know, I just think that you probably need to stay on him to ask him because I do know for sure that Kerr had also applied for that forty million. Uh, Kevin Fields had applied for that forty million, and uh, uh, Marcus Winkler sat on that board that uh, helped uh, the council uh, persuade to get that money. So. Uh, so that's kind of important. It's being investigated, but uh, let somebody that looks like me get forty million dollars and go. It's, it's a whole problem. So uh, uh, I had asked Marcus why are we tippy toeing around this. So when I asked those hard questions, he asked me to challenge me. Well, um, it shouldn't even have had to be led to being challenged. What's right? It's right. What's wrong? It's wrong. Yeah, he was on that committee. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean the committee that awarded the forty? Uh huh. Like what? No. It, well, he was on the committee because it goes into committee first, mm -hmm. and then after it goes in front of the committee, then it goes to the body as a whole. Well, he was on the body as a whole, and he was on the committee. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, I kind of asked a lot of tough questions when it came to that, and uh, uh, he kind of gave me a hard time. You know, but he came back and said, well, thank you for checking me, but still it's been a very slow process. You know it's going to take steps for you. Yeah. It, I, I just know that, you know, and this was before my time, uh, it wasn't a, a, a really slow process, process. That process with Barbara Shanklin and that process yeah. with Judy Green went real fast. Mm -hmm. All over the paper, slanting their names and money, and we're talking about just thousands of dollars. Yeah. With this pen to team stuff, Forty million dollars, and it took it, it took it took a lot of people a long time to get up on the sign that paper. That forty million dollars could have took us a long way, with, with with a lot of stuff that a lot of us is fighting with in the community. You know, so I would say definitely don't let that stay sleep, because when it stays sleep too long, you know, 
We got to start asking questions. In a minute, they're going to be sick of me. I'm going to be I'm gonna be in the boat with Corey in a minute. <laughs> you had a question? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I want to say this in the most respectful way. Has has your your colleagues or has Metro Council have they come up with any proposals or any policy or any edicts to give to the mayor about the uh, the report for the police Metro Police uh, and would you all like to see change or would can be different? Have y'all came up with anything to give the mayor? No. We ain't came up with nothing. And actually, you know, when we got the report, I want to say that if you looked, if you're facing, if, you, if you're looking at Metro Council, everybody to the left didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. If you look at the row at the top where all the blacks was, we asked all the hard questions. We wasn't playing with them at all. We wanted, we, we, I want those names, period. I think that that is the first step to bridging the gap because I understand that, you know, this mayor did adopt this issue. This new chief did adopt this issue. But as, you know, I do have to call a spade a spade. He knew what he was adopting. He should, they should have just automatically gave the names. Because at the end of the day, if you don't get the names, if you don't get the names of those officers, this could still be going on. I feel like those officers should be punished. Well, no. Well, what what I gathered from the uh, DOJ when they were in town is they only they only right now they're not going to give out the names. They're not. The mayor has to give out the names that's in the report. But what they're here to do is just to have them in investigated and to tell them how to move forward. Nothing that has to do with what happened then. Do they have anything to do with? Yeah. So now that the um, now that the LMPD um, has released a lot of the body cams, because they wasn't even releasing those. So I think a lot of, of those internal internal affair uh, complaints can now really be ad uh, addressed. At first, they couldn't be addressed because they didn't have any proof. LMPD wasn't giving up any video uh, footage. So now that that they're beginning to. Uh, you know, work hand in hand. So, which is a, because at first they wasn't really getting anywhere. But I will say, once they give those names up, at least that, at least then we can identify who those officers are. And then from there, we can ask them, what are you going to do? Because we don't still want them on the force, right? right? We don't want them on the force after they done call people monkeys. You know, it, it what, why would we want them on the force? They need to be gone. Well, we can go ask American transparency. We've been asking them for that. Yeah. I've been asking for that. When I asked them for the names, I asked, hey, you got to be transparent. Right. You know, yeah. all your meetings, you know, I, that's why I show up. So, so I try not to miss nothing, so I try to show up. On the names, the mayor stated that he would release those in 45 days, and by my count, there were probably 18 days into the 45. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we just have to collectively, uh, I ask every time, what, you got them names yet? <laughs> every forum, you know, and I know he said 45 days, but still I'm asking, you got them names yet? You know, and now everybody wants to throw uh, this stuff about mental health. Oh, they was they got mental health issues. Yeah. Well, you shouldn't have been on the police force. I'm not supporting no wellness center. The police department, they got insurance. I'm not supporting that. That's just another word. Wellness center is just another word for gym. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. Yeah. Who else? You go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. I don't remember seeing you, sir, in this. Uh, did you, were you there, sir, when I spoke to the mayor? Yes, I was. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, great. Your name, please? Me, Sean Daniels. You asked for a meeting. Uh, you asked the president for a meeting with the mayor, right? Okay. All right. So you were there. Yeah, I was out. Most definitely. Okay. Right. So I just heard him because I'm in the same district as him, and my concern about was because I already called him on Friday to make sure that he go make set that meeting up. But listening to you, it looked like I need to be a little concerned <laughs> whether or not he's going to move for what I'm asking him to do. So I'm now going to ask you, can I get your help to make sure that happens? I need to talk to his uh, administrative assistant. They said it was going to move on it. I didn't get no call. They don't believe in rushing people out to get people signed. But I'm glad I came because I needed to hear that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you also get the 
No. And I don't understand it because I they made our students sleep so and I gave them out to the assistant. They said and they they were passed out when we got there. I didn't get it. <laughs> wow. No, I didn't get okay. it. But as far as a uh, uh, so if I'm not mistaken, can you bring me up to speed about you and the mayor? Y'all had somewhat of a Sure, I'll bring you up to speed. Um January and Martin Luther King's birthday. You know, I'm a conservative under what I should do because she gave me permission and the president did. He said, I said, if you don't want me to, if you're going to handle it, I won't say anything. He said, go ahead. But now I'm concerned whether or not uh, I need to look into that. Well, what I would say is, is uh, Marcus is your council person? Yes. Yeah, you hold Marcus accountable. Yes. You make him no set that meeting up. Is, did he tell you he was going to set it up? Oh, yeah. I talked to the administration okay. this week. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's the president of Metro Council. He leads the, he's the voice. Well, I'm glad I wanted to let you know. Yeah. So. And, and, and in the event that, that he does not, then uh, uh, I will follow up with Marcus and I will ask him. <laughs> if you oh, don't. Yeah. But you're one of his constituents. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. I see two more hands up. Yeah. yeah. So, my question is uh, mm -hmm. so, since we were talking about the DOJ report. It also says that Metro Council, the Metro government, is guilty of corruption also. Ain't right. So when we get into that, when we look into that, we look at the housing crisis. Oh, what do you got to say about this, high, this housing crisis? My mother doesn't get bigger right now. She came down to Metro Council. 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 She came So you got people that's in the housing you need to get uh, uh, situation. All right. And, and oh, as you yeah. see, like I said. So, 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 and, and I know this isn't. Uh, the, in the same boat. So uh, you need to find that ordinance, that eviction ordinance, mm -hmm. and you need to take that to them. Because I had to do that same thing. Ain't nobody supposed, somebody told my man, okay, mm -hmm. days two, and I went out there and I printed out that ordinance and I said, hey, why did y'all tell my man the owner of the lot didn't have y'all come here? And guess what they did? They tell you right back. The problem is, is there are a lot of policies that are out there, but nobody governs them. Nobody makes sure that that, 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 that they're being, uh, it's a policy that's out there, but nobody's policing them. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if, you, if your mom, if she has an eviction from 10 years ago and it goes back seven, then you gotta pull that ordinance up. Her, y'all holding her, y'all saying she can't move, you know, but have you called her, who's her council person? Uh, I believe she's in the second district. So she's in Barbara Shanker? I believe so. Second district. Yeah, I'll call uh, Barbara. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll call Barbara. There, I mean, there should be, you know, some help out there. There should be some help to where she should, you know, be able to get a little bit of help. You got my card. Yeah. I'll, make sure, I'll make sure that I connect you with Barbara and see if she can't help your mother. Okay? okay? Yeah. I have two questions in my family real quick. One, I live in your district. That's Andy Harvey. Um, I live in your district, and I heard you know, watching you live on my web, and I heard you say that you need our help. Yeah. What is it that we can do to help you do the things that you're trying to do to help us do all the things that we're trying to do? Good question. Uh, your name? Yeah. Shonda Lee. One of the first things that I was telling them that I felt like, you know, something with your quarry is. When I get things across, I can't be radical. As much as I want to be, I can't be just to be radical. Right. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you can get your point across 
but not radical. Right. When you come in a room, you just get your point across. They listen more, but you know, when you're radical, right. then they, they look at everything. Right. I watch them. I watch their movement. I watch their ass. I see when you up in front talking. You know what I'm saying? And I give you that eye contact. But when you look around the room, you're not getting from nobody else, so they're not paying no attention. You know? Uh, but I definitely need you. Because there's a lot of things that uh, a lot of uh, you guys say that I agree with it wholeheartedly. But when you radical, you know, right. people don't listen. Am I radical? No. Okay. You, 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 you really want to chill. You really want to chill. But guess what? Be who you are. Because I'm very passionate. I'm passionate about stuff. I just had to learn how to channel Right. Me being passionate. So, you know, to get people to pay attention to the things that I say. Because you make a lot of sense. It's just you're right. But people just say, well, no, I'm thinking about trying to that. You know, so it's just, you know, when you're passionate, I know that rage comes along. So I never tell you, be who you are. Be true to who you are. You know, just I'll help you find another way to, 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 to get your fun across. You know, a quick second question. I'm sorry. Um, so one of the things that the speakers who spoke this uh, past week was talking about it is so much, everybody knows there is so much going on in our state. So to give 10 community members three minutes to talk about all the things, that is not enough. Because we can, uh, speakers can only speak every six weeks and we're trying to get more people. We already feel like we need to listen to, like you said, you know, the people on the right side of the room, y'all all was engaged with us. People on the left side, they was turning me up, talking to other people. So we noticed all this too. Mm -hmm. Like, how can we go about it? Because we've already started to, well, we talked about setting up meetings with each individual council member or whatever day we can get in. But we would like to not have to do that because our schedules is compacted as well as you all. Like, is there a day that we can work on to bring the community in so the council members can listen to us as a whole and we can get more than three minutes in. Well, like myself, so I'm having a community meeting in Southwick on uh, the 25th of this month. So my flyer is out today. So it's, it's in Southwick. Uh, it's for anybody to ask me any questions, for anybody to speak. Then I'm going to have a jar. Anybody can put just things that they want to change and things like that. And like I said, I'm still learning. Okay, you know that um, I'm still learning. I've been here since January. And uh, uh, one thing that I have learned is that it's a game over. Right. And you gotta play it. Exactly. Okay. It's uh, April the 25th, it's Southwick. The community is Absolutely. Uh, and you just, you have to play it. Uh, and you, anything, one council person <laughs> cannot get nothing done. That's it's right. It's 14 people that are involved. Okay, so you gotta, you know, you gotta rub shoulders with 14 people at least. That's right. Greg, right. your question. I have two. Okay. Number one. Make them together. I'm putting them together. Okay. Uh, on the DOJ report, have you all filed an open records uh, request? Has anybody on council filed an open records request? Because if you do file it and they deny it, they're going to end up in court and the judge will force them to release that name. Mm -hmm. So stop asking, have somebody officially filed an open records report because it is public knowledge. Whether he wants to hold on to it or not, his hand can be forced to give those names. Mm -hmm. So take that power away from you. Okay, so, so let, me, let me say this. We have a report. So we have a report, uh, and if anybody would like a copy of it, I, I can give it to them. But it doesn't have names in those. That's right. But yeah. he has a report that has been redacted, uh, that has not been redacted with the names. That's the report you wanted. Right. The one well, I want to say he, uh, now I don't think he has this yet. So, so, right, when you, like, I think he said he'll have it in 45 days. Um, so I'm I, eliminate Tammy, just eliminate that, just file the open record report and get rid of him having a, of a choice to give it to you. Just have somebody file it. Okay. okay. And then the second part is about the health 
uh, since nobody had been in the, uh, an office except for me in this room, y'all don't know what it feels like uh, for you to walk up to a mother and tell them your child is dead right now. That's hard. We're not robots. We're human beings. You don't know what it feels like to go in the home and see the dad have blown his head off and brains have splattered over the walls. It's a lot more than just giving traffic tickets. And, and so, yes, those officers need some type of relief uh, for what they go through. I can tell you nightmare after nightmare of 20 years on the force that some of you all never have to live through. A guy that his wife set him on fire and he's still alive, but he ended up dying, but he's, he's in so much pain because he's been set up. So I'm, I'm, these pictures are burned in my head, you know, and they didn't offer any relief for me when I was on there. So it's a lot bigger. And I'm just giving you more insight because mm -hmm. unless you talk to someone that's lived that life, you have no idea. Well, 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 well I've talked to several <clears throat> officers, and I have a couple of officers that I'm good friends with. And uh, um, basically, you know, the officers now, they don't care. It's just, they don't care. They just feel like, well, when we go pull somebody over, uh, we get a lawsuit. You know, when, when this happens, we get a lawsuit. So let them be. Our only, we second responders. We, we second responders. That's how they feel. So, you, you know, you got officers on the street that are saying that now they can't do their jobs. So now they're second responders. You know, and I just feel like for taxpayers' money, I just feel like that, you know, the police department, you know, government, they, get, they have great insurance. They have some of the best insurance. Uh, and uh, go see a therapist under your insurance. Thank Not you. spending thousands and millions of dollars of taxpayer money for a wellness center. Make it mandatory. No. Make yeah. it mandatory. Yeah, it just, you know, and, and, and if you got mental health, you should be out on force. We Even should. after, so, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you know that from the, no, you know, you this, this, this We all this have mental health. health. Right. <laughs> we all have mental health. You can have to talk about a part time. <laughs> <laughs> At this point of the agenda, approval of the minutes from the last meeting. I believe all the members received the minutes and mail. Are there any corrections or additions to the minutes? Any corrections or additions to the minutes? Now, I move the motion that we accept the minutes as been presented in email to the members. Charlie Holloway. Second. And popular moves and seconds, the minutes will be accepted as printed. Any discussion? Those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. And I'm hoping all the ayes are the members. <laughs> <laughs> Non-members are not allowed to speak unless you get permission. Minutes have been adopted. Treasurer's report from the treasurer.
an imbalance of 84,403, 96. And our scholarship fund down at the balance of 27,768 dollars. Uh, for your new members, um, Thirty dollars is thirty dollars a year. And uh, we would love for you to uh, join us. Uh, uh, we are. If you do nothing else. 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 Stay live.